two, one. Good afternoon, and welcome to our first Race Counts webinar. My name is Talu ben Mishikbin, and I'm the Race Counts Manager here at Advancement Project. I'll be facilitating this webinar this afternoon. Our primary goals for this webinar are for users to understand the rationale and approach behind race counts, become familiar with the tool and its major findings, and be able to navigate the online platform. A quick overview of what we'll be covering this afternoon. We'll start by briefly going over the background and rationale for the project. Then I'll explain the approach and methodology behind the online tool. Next, we'll discuss the key findings and then touch on some of the site's key features. Afterwards, we'll walk through a live demonstration of the site, then we'll take a moment to dig into one of the counties, Los Angeles. Near the end, we'll briefly discuss using race counts and campaign, and finally, we'll go over the project's next steps. Back in 2015, when we first conceptualized developing a tool like this, there just weren't many tools out there for community advocates to give a clear picture of what was going on in the state, particularly around racial inequity. As an organization that's committed to lifting up the voices of communities of color and low-income communities in the policy-making process and budget decisions, we felt it was necessary to partner with the research and advocacy organizations you see to the right of the screen to develop an equity framework that was both rigorous and community-informed. As a result, we created a tool that blends advocacy, organizing, and research to support organizers and advocates in their local campaigns and statewide policy fights. Methodology. In the process of developing a list of issues and indicators to measure well-being individually and collectively, we scoured the academic literature on the topic and worked with at least 80 community organizations to find out what issues folks and communities care about most. We found out that folks were most concerned about issues like economic opportunity, housing, health care access, democracy, education, and crime and justice. Within each of these issue areas, we look at six to eight indicators like housing quality and home ownership, for example, parks access, food access, employment, poverty, incarceration, life expectancy, health insurance, high school graduation, access to early childhood care and education, census participation, and diversity of elected officials, just to name a few. After gathering data on each of these issues and analyzing them, we plotted the results on a scatter graph using what we call a 3D analytical framework. This framework is called performance, disparity, and impact. When we talk about performance, we're referring to how well a particular county is doing overall on any given issue, issue area or indicator. If you take high school graduation, for example, the counties above this line are those that perform better than average with the highest performing counties at the very top. And below, the, and below the lines, the counties that are performing below average with the very worst counties at the very bottom. So for example, if we're saying we're looking at high school graduation, the counties with the highest graduation rates are at the top and the ones with the lowest graduation rates are at the bottom. But for school suspensions, Counties with the highest or worst school suspension rates would be at the bottom, while the ones with the best or lowest suspension rates would be up top. For disparity, we're measuring how well the best performing ratio group is doing on any given issue or indicator compared to the other ratio groups. In places where there's a gap between ratio groups and that gap is the largest, these are the counties with the biggest disparities those approaching the right of the graph. Conversely, as the counties approach the left side of the graph, racial disparities between groups get smaller and smaller. In short, you have the most disparate counties to your right and the least disparate counties to your left. Last, we look at impact. Each of the colorful bubbles you see on this graph represents one county. 
The size of each bubble represents that county's population size, with the smallest counties illustrated here by the smallest bubbles, and the largest counties illustrated by the biggest bubbles, for example. The end result is a graph of the entire state of California. Once again, here's a visual of all 58 counties. The orange bubbles represent the counties that perform higher than average on overall, higher than average overall, but also have the highest disparities. In other words, while the county average might be good in terms of health or high school graduation, for example, these benefits are not enjoyed by everyone. This is why we call this quadrant prosperity for the few. For, the, for example, the county that might have an overall high school graduation rate on average, but might represent, this might represent graduation rates for white, Asian, and Filipino students. If you go across to the way bottom left, the yellow bubbles represent the counties that have low performance overall, but smaller levels of racial disparities. These counties are what we call struggling to prosper, meaning that everyone in the county is really struggling to get a leg up but the gap in performance between white communities and communities of color is smaller. These are the counties that could use an overall lift. The counties in the red are the counties that are not just struggling in terms of overall performance, they're also suffering from significant racial disparities. So for example, while the entire county is struggling on a whole host of issues on average, communities of color are having an even harder time on those issues. There are counties that need, these counties need more than an overall lift. They need some serious investments and policy interventions to make sure that in the process of lifting the entire county up, we don't continue to leave behind the most vulnerable communities in those counties. Last, we have the counties in green. These are the counties that are doing well overall in terms of overall performance and smaller gaps in performance between racial groups. The takeaway, however, is not that these counties are doing great and have zero challenges, but that compared to the other counties, there are fewer challenges around racial inequity. This is why we call this quadrant gains at risk, because policymakers and community resident, residents have to remain vigilant about all types of threats to equity. Take, for instance, large redevelopment projects that can lead to displacement of lower income residents or natural disasters like the wildfires we saw in 2018 that impacted several northern counties, which can lead to local demographic changes that can cause these counties to shift downward or to the right. Ultimately, our hope is that over time, wins at the local and state levels can lead to improvements on overall performance and racial equity. The most ideal scenario would be to see all of the counties move into the green where all Californians are afforded equitable access to resources and opportunities across the state. I've added this slide here to let you know that earlier this year, we added cities to risk counts. Now, users can use our 3D framework and look at performance disparity and impact at the city level. These cities, are those that have a population of 65,000 or more. Key findings. Now in this section, I would just like to briefly go over some of the regional patterns highlighted in the data. In the Bay Area, for example, nearly all of the counties are performing above average. However, as you can see from the counties to the right, the orange counties, the Bay Area has some of the most severe racial disparities. Most of these disparities are around education, housing, and health access. In the Central Valley, we see the opposite effect. All of these counties are positioned well below the average. While many of these counties are clustered around the average in terms of racial disparity, meaning they're not doing the worst, but they're not doing the best around inequity, a county like Fresno County, which is the largest in terms of population, ranked sixth most disparate in the state. This county is in the red on every single issue except the built environment, an issue that everyone seems to be struggling with here. Moving on to Southern California, we can see that as a region, there is less of a clear pattern in terms of performance. On racial disparity, you see all of the counties except one 
clustered around the axis with the average. Meaning, again, they don't do the best, but they also don't do the worst in terms of racial inequity. These counties fall largely in the center. On performance, you can see that San Diego is Orange County performing above average as you expect. And to some degree, same, same goes for Riverside and San Bernardino County at the bottom. We look at Los Angeles. I guess some of you will be surprised to find that Los Angeles performs more like the Inland Empire and less like San Diego. And our case study section will touch on some of the reasons for this. The Central Coast. Finally, we have this region that also shows a less of a clear flat pattern. Notice there's at least one county in three, in three out of four quadrants. These counties are probably doing better on average because of tourism and big agriculture, which are the two dominant industries in the region. If you unpack a county like Ventura, you'll see that it performs well overall on every issue except one, criminal justice. As a matter of fact, Ventura ranks as the most racially disparate in the state on criminal justice. This is due in large part to racial disparities, incarceration rates, truancy arrests, and curfew arrests of youth. On issues like economic opportunity, health access, and education, however, Ventura performs well with much fewer disparities. The key takeaways we arrived at by applying a racial equity lens to the entire state of California were that first, in every corner of the state, in every aspect of life, people of color and indigenous people still face the challenge of race-based disparities. And just this plays itself out differently in each region and different communities experience bigger challenges in some issue areas relative to others. By race, we see that the black community has the highest number of indicators where they have the worst rates and outcomes. These burdens cut across multiple issue areas from life expectancy, home ownership, school suspensions, household income, and incarceration. Latinos are the next most likely group to face the worst disparities across indicators, but they represent the largest number of Californians impacted by these racial disparities. One hitch is that although Asians score well in many indicators, there is a lot of heterogeneity within this group, meaning that the performance of certain Asian ethnic groups can inflate the performance of the entire category. In the near future, we hope to disaggregate the data on Asians and break the outcomes down by ethnic group. In our launch report, we discussed some of the major factors driving racial equity in the state. If you would like to learn more about drivers, you can download our launch report on our site. Key features. We will be moving on from our live, we'll be moving on to our live demonstration in just a moment. But first, let me go over some of the tool's key features. When we think of our scatter plot, the analogy I like to use is that it allows users to look at the entire state from 30,000 feet in the air. This feature allows users to pinpoint which cities and counties have the largest resource and opportunity gaps in the state. Next, our heat table allows users to see how much each county, to, allows users to see how each county is doing across all seven issue areas, enabling users to identify which of the seven key issue areas each county struggles with most. The bar graphs allow users to look at and compare how each racial group is performing on any given indicator. And during the live demo, we can go over how to use the comparison tool and how to export graphs. Now let's turn to a live demo. To begin, please type in racecounts.org in your browser. You should see that the home page says California at a turning point. If you go to the top of the navigation bar, you will see state, counties, cities, issues, and map. Click state. This option will bring you to the scatter plots. The county scatter plot is first, and if you scroll down a little, you'll see the city, the city scatter plot beneath it. 
In order to look at which county is which, you can either use your cursor to hover over any given bubble, or you can use the menu list to the left and choose a county from the drop down bar. This shows you how the counties are doing overall. It's essentially the aggregate of all the issues together. If you want to look at how the counties fare on a specific issue or indicator, you need to click that issue or indicator or the specific indicator and you'll see the bubbles shift around. So let's take Ventura, for example. Scroll down and you can find Ventura County in the drop down menu. You'll see that Ventura County overall, when you look at the composite of all seven issue, indicate, issue areas, Ventura fares well in the green. Now, if we were to look at an issue like housing, for example, you notice that Ventura moves to the orange. We can dig in a little bit deeper into housing and pick a specific indicator like housing quality. Notice Ventura moves far down and all the way to the right. Ventura ranks number one as the most racially disparate county in terms of housing quality. Let's say we wanted to take a deep dive into a specific county. Let's take Fresno, for example. You would go to the top navigation bar and choose Fresno County from the drop down. Here, you can get a demographic breakdown of the county. If you hover over the pie chart, you can see the percentages for each racial group in the county. If you scroll down, this takes you to our heat table. Here, you can see the performance and disparity for the state. You could also see the performance and disparity for the county in question, as well as some of the neighboring counties. If we look at Fresno, we can see that Fresno struggles on all issue areas except one. Here, even though Fresno has lower disparities on the healthy built environment, it's still low performing on that issue area. Now say you want to compare all the different racial groups to each other. Scroll down and you'll find the individual bar graphs for each issue and indicator. Let's take poverty, for example. Go to economic opportunity, click poverty to your left, and you'll see that overall, on average, in Fresno County, 27.4% of people live in poverty. If we look at the poverty rate for rights, we'll see that white residents in Fresno County have a poverty rate of 13.2%, while the poverty rate for Blacks is three times that at 39.6%. Poverty among Pacific Islanders is at a whopping 50.6%, nearly four times the poverty rate for whites in Fresno County. Let's take another example. Let's say life expectancy. We can see to the right that the average for the county is 78.4 years life expectancy. If we look at life expectancy for white residents, we'll see that the life expectancy is 77.4 years compared to Blacks who have a life expectancy of 70.3 years. That's over seven years difference in life expectancy rates. Let's move on to the comparison tool, which is one of the really neat features of the site. Here, we're looking at Fresno City, or City of Fresno. We can compare the City of Fresno to another city, or we can compare the City of Fresno to the County of Fresno. Hit the drop down and search for Fresno. At the top, you can see the demographic breakdown for each, the city and the county. Fresno City is on the top is the top bar, while Fresno County is represented by the second bar, the orange. 
we scroll down to the bar graphs, we can see that, uh, let's see here. Let's look at poverty again. We can see that the average for the city is 30.5%, while the average for the county is a little bit less than that at 27.4%. Then you can look at each racial group and see that at the city level, there are more whites in poverty than there are at the county level. Last but not least, let's go over our exporting feature. If you click on the three tiny little lines in the upper right hand corner of any given bar graph, you have the option to download it to your computer as either a JPEG or PDF. Same goes for scatter plots. This is, example, this is an example of a printable version of a map for the bar graphs. Take a look at the scatter plots. Once again, if you click on the three tiny bars in the upper right-hand corner of the graph, you can either download it as a JPEG or PDF. And there you have it, a printable version of our map. That's essentially it in terms of navigating the site. Let me give you guys a couple of minutes to look at your favorite city or your favorite county and navigate the site a little bit so that you can see how you can work through the site. How are folks doing? I hope you're able to navigate the site with ease. If not, please feel free to send us more messages in the chat. Let's move on. Go back to our PowerPoint. Let's take a deep dive into Los Angeles County. If we look at Los Angeles, we see that LA ranks, we'll see how LA ranks relative to the other 57 counties. We see that it performs below average at a 44 out of 58, and then it has a disparity ranking that's about average, 28 out of 58. We can go to our heat table of disparity if we want to look deeper into which issues is Los Angeles struggling with the most. We can see that for Los Angeles, crime and justice, housing, and the healthy built environment are the issues that Los Angeles struggles with the most. On democracy, economic opportunity, health access, and education, even though Los Angeles is low performing compared to other counties, it has fewer disparities when we compare it to the rest of the state. Let's take a look at criminal justice and housing. Here, we can look at how Los Angeles fares on criminal justice when we look at the aggregate of all of the criminal justice indicators. Notice that Los Angeles went from a rank, an overall ranking of 28 in terms of disparity to a ranking of 12 in terms of disparity. That means when we look at all of the 58 counties in, Los, in California, Los Angeles ranks 12th worst in terms of racial disparity and criminal justice. If we dig a little deeper and look at a specific indicator, we can see that on incarceration, Los Angeles jumps from 12 overall in criminal justice to second worst in the county in terms of racial disparities and incarceration rates. We can go to our bar graphs to see what the racial breakdown looks like 
for this particular indicator. If we compare between races, we'll see that black residents in LA are 15 times more likely to be incarcerated than whites and 100 times more likely than API residents to be incarcerated. I'll give you a moment to take a look at those percentages there. These rates are for 1,000 persons of the same race. In other words, for every 1,000 African Americans in Los Angeles, 20.8 are incarcerated compared to only 0.2 of Asian and Pacific Islanders for every 1,000 of persons from that race. If we move over to housing quality, we can see that Los Angeles once again moves from ranking 28th in overall racial disparity to number two in overall racial disparity for housing quality. If we go to our bar graph, we can compare between groups and see that Latino residents are two and a half times more likely than white residents to live in housing that lack the kitchen, plumbing, or heat. I'll give you guys a moment there just to look at those rates. Let's turn to some campaign examples. So what's the point of all of this? Here's where the advocacy comes in. With this data, we believe that stakeholders have the potential to move the needle on racial inequities in California. Funders, elected officials, officials from state and local administrative agencies, and community organizers can work on these issues to ensure that we see greater performance and fewer racial disparities on a host of issues that uh, impact Californians. Let's take some of these campaigns, for example. In 2013, Los Angeles launched the School Climate Bill of Rights. If we were to use race counts back then, we could have used high school graduation and school suspensions as indicators for this campaign. Similar to the Student Equity Needs Index, indicators like high school graduation, math and English proficiency, and early care and education access can give organizers the tools they need to shape up their campaigns. So if we go down to the fight that's coming up in 2020, schools and communities first at the bottom, we can see that this is a wide ranging campaign that has the potential to make a significant positive impact on the communities that could really use the boost and funding. Race counts can also help community organizers build alliances. Next steps. Within the next six months or so, we will begin our site redesign plan. Until then, I am available to do in-person race counts trainings for your organization or agency. In the fall, we'll be publishing our report highlighting the data on indigenous on the indigenous community. And by the end of the year, we hope to update the site with updated data and a user interface that makes it easier for community advocates to navigate. That's the end of our webinar. Thank you. Also, please be sure to visit the link in the serve to visit the link to the survey. We would really appreciate your feedback. Thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon. If you have any questions, please send them to us directly, and we'll be following up with a link to a survey. If you have any additional uh, thoughts or feedback about how we can make this training more useful, we'd love to hear them. Have a wonderful weekend, and thank you again for joining us.